this weekend saw some of the worst load shedding that South Africa has been through in a very long time. And I'm sure a lot of people were suffering and were in pain. However, pain aside, we are investors. And it is very important that whenever a situation happens, we ask ourselves this question. How can I make money from this situation? And so in today's video, this is the question I'll be answering. How can you make money from the load shedding situation? And so what I'll be doing is showing you guys a few shares that I think are worth investing in for the medium term, short term, and for the long term, as long as this electricity crisis persists. So let's get right into it. The situation, Electricity Supply Commission, AKA ESCOM, founded in 1923, 99 years ago now. That probably already starts giving us an idea of what the problem is. ESCOM is old really really old a lot of the technology that they use is in fact really 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 old and so south africa has a lot of complex problems however i've summed them up to really two things you know the, the two things that are really causing stress on our electricity and have been causing stress on our electricity for a very long time the first one is Back when ESCOM was founded in 1923, electricity wasn't really complex. You know, when we when we spoke of electricity, it was really about lights, street lights and lights in your house. But nowadays, of course, electricity usage is much more complex. We got computers, we got fridges, we got electric stoves, we got multiple appliances in the same houses. We got like a lot of things that need electricity, agricultural tools, manufacturing, all of it needs electricity. And of course, all of it is pushed by the other problem, population growth. South Africa's population has been growing hectically. Let's look at it like this. In 1951, there was 13 million people. And now in 2022, there's about 61 million people in South Africa. So this is a chart of South Africa's population growth and it's growing, it's hectic. Like we've been literally growing people like crazy and all of these people need electricity. All of them need to be fed. All of them need housing that has electricity. All of them need technology that needs electricity. And so as electrical usage increases with population growth, you have to increase the amount of electricity that you can produce as a country. And so South Africa has been struggling with that exact problem for a very long time, way over over 15 to 20 and even 25 um, years. But what's the solution to the problem? The solution to the problem is where, of course, we as investors get in on board. And that is, we have to supply, we have to diversify our supply of electricity. And so these are obviously the stocks that we are going to look at. And um, I'll quickly just flip over to the screen here. So the government solution is, you know, there has to be renewable independent power producers. So they've got a program that they're running and they're trying to source power from all these uh, various places. We've also seen other um, headlines such as ESCOM warns of higher stages of load shedding as it scrambles to procure power, right? So ESCOM is trying to procure power. And so the solution is power procurement, which is obviously a uh, pretty much diversified power procurement and we got a, an article here from MoneyWeb, and uh, i'll sum it up in terms of what uh the ceo says he hopes to access about 1000 megawatts from existing independent power producers like sasol and sapi and hopes to see it have it online within a week or two so in the short term this is what they want to do they want to get a lot of independent power producers um on board within the next week or two in order to obviously not have what we had this past uh weekend and so there are different electricity um, technologies that are used. This is directly from ESCOM's website. There's solar power, there's wind power, there's biomass, there's wave power, there's coal, and there's conventional hydropower, and then there's nuclear, and then there's pumped uh, storage. So there's different ways of actually generating electricity that South Africa can potentially uh, look at. And so there are a few companies, luckily public that we can invest in, that are actually embarking on producing this energy. And some of them are actually already supplying ESCOM. So on the solar side, we have um, Exaro. Exaro, of course, runs um, a company called Kenergy. And right now, this is what they say about it. As the second largest locally owned renewable developer in South Africa, Exaro's wholly owned subsidiary, Kenergy, currently contributes 229 megawatts of renewable energy to the national power grid. That is a very, very key sentence. They currently already supply. So Exaro is in a good position. When you already currently supply, it means there's a high probability that you are going to continue to supply because you already have the infrastructure outlay. And this is a key part of their business that they are actually trying to grow. Why? Because 
Exaro historically has been a coal um, supplier. And of course, we know coal long term is something that is being frowned upon because it's a fossil fuel and it causes climate change. So Exaro has been pushing their business to actually grow this little part of it. And we're going to see it probably expanding. So this is a really good share to look for when it comes to um, the supply of solar of solar power. And then we have gas and other fuels. And so there's AECI, Renogen, everybody knows. And then, of course, there's Sassol. Sassol, um, bid uh, back Sassol to bid supply South Africa's ESCOM with temporary power. So about two years ago, Sassol bid it to have um, to, to basically supply temporary power to ESCOM in which of course they successfully nailed the bid. That's why they are currently one of the independent power producers. And so for the long term, this is something that's key for Sassol's business that they are actually hoping to grow to supply electricity to South Africa directly to ESCOM and then ESCOM obviously redistributes it to the rest of us. So that's a good place to actually Actually, uh, keep your money for the long term if you want to make money from this transition in terms of electricity that South Africa is going through. Then, of course, there's also SAPI. Um, SAPI is a, is, a, is a low lying one, but it's actually the key company that's pushing what we call bioenergy. So biomass um, energy, which is basically using um, biomaterial and then using it to burn um, water which causes steam and then you turn that steam into pressure and then obviously you spin turbines with it and you get electricity and so they have one of the biggest um projects currently being constructed and of course have one of the biggest um projects as well that are currently uh, running which is the Gondwana mill and they, they're doing very well in, in terms of that project and they're supplying South Africa so we're going to see them continue to supply South Africa and obviously grow that part of the business as as well so these are the stocks to look for uh, right now for the short term we, we uh, Sassol and Sapi are really really good Exaro as well very very good for the long term and the medium term and then there's AECI and Renogen these are gas providers and of course S um, Escom has actually hinted that they really want to go into gas quite a lot and so those are two companies that will actually benefit from that as well so if you're an investor you should be looking at these companies there are obviously a lot more but these are the ones that i've picked for now under um energy diversification as well a lot of the mining companies are, are, are slowly trying to get in on the action because there's a lot of money to be made from south africa's electricity needs and then of course there's the other big winners there's always other big winners, and that is the big four banks, APSA, FNB, Standard, and NetBank. Most of them have developed um, green energy funds. In fact, if we go to the Wikipedia page of the Gondwana Biomass Power Station, we can see um, the construction cost. A very large number there, 89 million uh, US dollars. And of course, if you go to the bottom, you will read something here. The total cost for the power plants is estimated to be 89 million uh, US dollars. Of that, 66 million US dollars, so 75%, will be borrowed from APSA and NetBank. The money always has to come from somewhere, and the banks are in a very, very good position, especially the ones that obviously have corporate investment banking. They're in a very good position to drive growth in that area. And of course, a lot of them have announced green energy funds initiatives that they um that they are actually doing and so you're going to see them over the long term making quite a bit of money from all these various uh projects so there you have it those are some of the ways that you can invest in order to make money from load shedding just to sum it up look at the big four banks which are the ones best positioned i really like netbank because they've really thrown in um, themselves they've like they've really gone in on the race to supply uh, capital for green energy projects and then of course there's these companies here you can look at them these are very solid businesses and they're going to be throwing a lot of money into obviously supplying escom with power so you can make money from load shedding and just one last note we're actually not the only country that's experiencing rolling blackouts certain parts of the world that i won't mention you can google it are actually also experiencing blackouts it's a global phenomena um as the world transitions to new types of energy that rolling blackouts are actually going to happen of course the causes are different and south africa's causes are more historical than something that has recently happened so look out for opportunities around the world as well there's a lot of companies that are going to be getting into that space that you can invest in and make money anyway guys until then enjoy the rest of your tuesday goodbye <laughs>